my friends, today is the day. Finally, I have all of my toys, you could say, in alignment. I have, of course, a Glock here. I've got three Glocks in 9mm, uh, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP. Um, I have my ransom rest here that will lock and hold each one of the pistols in there. It, it's, it's known for simulating the human grip, but takes the human out of it and also allows me to, from a mobile standpoint, still fire the trigger without actually touching the firearm, uh, meaning that there's not gonna be any, any interaction that's uh, human induced at that point that's going to control or change uh, what the recoil impulse is going to be. A lot of times people will subconsciously go to fire a larger caliber uh, pistol or weapon and they'll tend to adjust their grip accordingly. They'll grip it a little bit harder, possibly uh, more firm, obviously. So this is gonna allow me to make sure that I don't manipulate that grip in any kind of way based on whatever the caliber might be. So I've got all the, these guys in place. This is not going anywhere. And again, there's no human uh, interaction except for this that's gonna actually take place. I've got my arms core ammunition. Um, my favorite ammunition, uh, full disclosure, these guys supply me all of my handgun ammunition on the set here. Um, I sought them out because I always liked their ammunition. I felt like it was extremely affordable, but also extremely consistent. Um, a lot of times you pay for affordable ammunition and you're getting very inconsistent loads. So I like them. I've got them set up and look, nobody's perfect. I've got my lab radar set up also. In the event that I see inconsistencies in felt recoil or recoil impulse, I can tell if it is load related based on the ammunition because my lab radar using Doppler radar is going to calculate the feet per second using Doppler radar and tell me if for some reason I had a, a hotter load or maybe a little bit lighter load in my ammunition. Um, that's going to again show me if I have any inconsistencies in my Mantis system, which is over here. The Mantis system actually, uh, the unit itself affixes to the bottom of the rail of your handgun but it reads via Bluetooth to an app that they have. And what I've got it set on is recoil. I want to see what the recoil comparison is between all of these. Now, the cool thing is what I see here will also be captured on the lab radar. And then you're also going to see using a visual behind me, I put this makeshift little graph up with different lines on it so that you can visually see if the numbers don't tell you enough of a tale on the lab radar with the feet per second and the Mantis system showing the bar graph of the felt recoil, then you'll be able to see it visually here. So it's, it's an exercise that I've been wanting to do for a long time. There's been this lifelong debate on recoil, what everybody complains and says that's not true and this and that. And again, people saying that you're manipulating your grip whenever you're grabbing this higher caliber or you're gripping lighter. So there's, there's so many things and arguments that have taken place in the past. I'm trying to put a lot of that to bed right now by simply showing uh, the physical performance of these rounds. And I picked three Glocks for obvious reasons. Uh, it's a very popular gun. Most people have shot one, but also their frames are relatively consistent when you go from one caliber to the other. Yes, the the 45 has a little bit meatier frame to it. Um, you know, we'll show the weights and all that of each one of these, these guns to show that there's a little bit more mass involved here, but not a huge difference, not a huge difference. So we're, we should still see a difference in that recoil um, uh, impulse. So cool, cool um, exercise. I've been excited about this for a very long time. Again, I want to thank Mantis System, Lab Radar, Ormsco Ammunition, and Ransom Rest for all taking part in this. These guys, this, this does not happen without these guys involved. So let's get to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to shoot all these. I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to show you some of the highlights, starting with 9, then 40, then 45. Uh, again, I'll show you some of the clips and highlights through that um, for the amount of time it would take me to run through all of that because I plan on shooting about 50 to 100 rounds with each one of these calibers. So obviously, it's way too long of a video, way too boring of a video. It's probably already boring you, to be quite honest with you. But uh, let me skip through all that real quick, again, show you some highlights, and then we'll, re we'll, we'll recap at the end of it. My setup worked pretty good. Now, while it's not advisable to reset the ransom rest by pushing down on the slide, I noticed that if I pushed down on the ransom rest base where you're supposed to, that I had less control of the actual system and would sometimes get a false positive on the Manus app. The Manus app would think sometimes whenever it hit abruptly on the base 
that a shot had been fired and it would try to record recoil. So that's why I'm pushing down the slide here where you're not supposed to. Now to calculate your feet per second properly, the lab radar needs to know a number of things, but also it needs to know the grain weight of the particular bullet. So when I switched to 40 Smith & Wesson, I had to change that reading in the lab radar. Now when we were shooting the 9mm, we noticed that we consistently got, using the visual in the bottom right hand corner, we consistently got the muzzle riding up right around in the orange area. Notice the 40 caliber, or the 40 Smith & Wesson rather, goes just above the orange now. So we're getting that visual that we were looking for, but we'll also look at our readings here in a second. After several rounds downrange from our 40 Smith & Wesson, it was time to move on to our 230 grain 45 ACP round. This was our final round, bigger bullet. Now one thing you'll notice here, notice my red line in the back here. Remember the nine millimeter barely crept into the orange line. The 40 Smith & Wesson went just above the orange line. And here the 45 ACP is going well into the red line. Now it was time to take a look at some of this data. This was going to be a very interesting look. Okay, friends, I tried to set this up to where it's easy to look at and process the data here. If you look at the top where it says 9mm, just to the right of that, the dotted line that you see behind the red lines, that's dead center of the axis of the recoil plane coming from the bottom going up. All of those red lines are actually the different, all 13 different shots that were made and the different path that they took recoiling upwards. The picture to the right is the highest path that the 9mm actually recoiled upwards going into that orange line. And of course to the right hand side there you'll notice that's data straight from the Mantis system. The muzzle rise which is highlighted at 20.10 degrees that's the degree of rise off of the vertical um, line that you have. That black line behind the picture would be consistent with zero degrees and where you see the muzzle at in this picture that's 20.10 degrees higher than that um, that black line. That's the angle that it is. Uh, you'll notice below that recoil width that is again those red lines that you see the distance between all of them um, the average width of that that's pretty much shows the inconsistency of the recoil one thing to note is notice how much wider the 40 smith and wesson recoil width is in this picture and all the red lines how much wider they are than say the nine millimeter and the 45 acp that's what you hear when when you hear people talk about the torque of the 40 smith and wesson and having such an unconventional recoil impulse that's what they're talking about um, it's all over the place the nine and the 45 is extremely consistent with a upwards moving recoil movement for the most part. Um, and you can see also that the 9mm and the 45 ACP, most of those shots are just to the right of center. The dotted line being center, the white dotted line being center. Look at all the red marks on the 9 and the 45. They are mostly to the right of that center line, where the 40 Smith & Wesson is all over the place. It's to the left and it's to the right, mostly to the right, but again, you see it's easily as far to the left as it is to the right. You'll also notice the difference between these guys. Notice the muzzle rise on the 9mm is 20.10 degrees, where the muzzle rise on the 40 is 25.5, and then we have 34.08 on the 45 of muzzle rise degrees. That's a pretty significant difference in those muzzle rises for sure. Um, I mean, you're talking about between the first two, you've got five degrees of separation between the 9 and the 40 as far as muzzle rise difference but it goes as much as almost nine degrees between the 40 and the 45 I wasn't expecting to see that huge of a jump between the 45 and the 40 Smith and Wesson definitely the 40 seems to have from a rise standpoint less muzzle rise than what I anticipated I believe that torque that uh, unconventional torque that the 40 Smith and Wesson has 
makes a lot of us believe that it actually recoils a lot more than what it does because again looking at this the muzzle rise is not near as much as i thought it would be a uh, pretty significant difference between the 9 and the 45 13 almost 14 degrees of difference of muzzle rise between those two calibers now speaking of that recoil with take a look at this again you have your 940 and your 45 acp this is the variance that you have on the uh, recoil width. If you'll notice, the white line would be the average. Um, you'll also notice that on the 9mm that most of that uh, rise that you'll find is to the right of that center line. Again, looking over at the, uh, excuse me, the 40 Smith & Wesson, look at how many of the lines they are, there are to the left and how inconsistent they are, especially the one that I have, have highlighted in dark red. You'll notice that that's not exactly a straight line going up. Very unusual uh, line going up there. That's to emulate that torque or to at least uh, define the torque that you're finding with that muzzle rise. And then you move over to the 45 ACP, and if you see how well and nice and straight and consistent those lines are going up and almost dead on on your uh, your center axis. I know there's some shots to the, a little bit to the uh, left and to the right, but we're talking about one degree difference uh, coming off of that center line axis. So that again shows you the differences between the type of felt recoil that you're going to experience shooting each one of these calibers. The 9mm and the 45 again being relatively conventional and straight up going from bottom to top. And with your 40 Smith and Weston, yeah, it's going bottom to top, but it's definitely got some sideways movement that's going to not just torque that shot but you have to understand that when we're dealing with polymer frame pistols like what we have here that's torquing that frame a little bit and that's going to function and operate and feel a whole lot different in your hand when shooting that 40 smith and wesson versus that 9 or that 45 acp another thing that's kind of cool about this mana system is that not only will you get averages of these strings of shots that you put together, but you can actually go in there and select each individual shot to see what the characteristics of that shot are. As you can see, you can measure recovery time, your muzzle rise, which is what I have highlighted right here, which is uh, signified by that red little line on the side of muzzle rise. This is showing all 13 shots of muzzle rise that I have here with the one selected being shown in the darker red line. Um, you also have your recoil width. You'll notice that that's the, again, what I spoke about earlier, the all the shots going up, the width between them left to right. And, of course, your recoil angle. Um, that's where the line would be if uh, your gun is off center of the line going straight up and down if it's to the left or the right of it, the angle that it might be recoiling upwards. So, again, you can actually dissect this and look at it shot by shot individually and see what each shot is. I could see a person in training video taping themselves shooting and also going back and comparing what they see with the videotape with the actual data that you can pull down here shot by shot. Now one thing that I thought would be a bit interesting is to take uh, the human, me, and put back into the mix just to show you the difference. Uh, we'll analyze all this data again in the studio and a little bit later on, but I want to go ahead and run um, a five round drill with the 9, the 40, and the 45. Um, just to see in comparison what the human does when it comes to recoil impulse and all that good stuff uh, back in the studio later on. So here we go. Didn't lock back because I had my hand on the uh, stop there to catch. Okay, that was the nine millimeter. Let me reset that and go to the 45. Here we go. Okay. Looks like it registered the first one as me putting the Mantis onto the rail. You gotta watch for those false positives because it's showing me firing six rounds there and only fired five. Let me go ahead. Oh, I know what it was. It was probably the slide going forward. So let me go ahead and put my slide forward first. Now I'm hot and ready. Let me reset my Mantis system and then start over. This should do it right here with the five shots instead of the 
six. This is a 40. 45, by the way. Yeah, five shots that time. Okay, we'll take this same data, bring it into the studio here in a little bit, and we'll analyze the human involvement into the recall management and the recall impulse and compare that with the um, ransom rest actually containing all of it and eliminating me from the picture. Well, clearly this was very interesting. One thing that uh, we did prove is that the ransom rest certainly taking the human element out of the recall impulse story it surely tells a different story. Clearly, I would have really messed up these numbers if we would have just shot this thing either on a, a sandbag or just freehanded. Uh, particularly, look at the 40 Smith & Wesson and the 45 ACP. I actually had some of my recoil impulses that were higher with my 40 Smith & Wesson than my 45 ACP, as you can see here. I actually averaged about 11.80 degrees with the 9mm. I averaged 16.23 degrees of muzzle rise with the 40 Smith & Wesson, and I averaged only 17.66 degrees with the 45 ACP. You'll remember the 45 ACP off the ransom rest had a 34.17 degree average versus this being a 17.66 freehanding it. Now, also of note is that the 40 Smith & Wesson had a 25.30 degree off the ransom rest to only an average of 16.23 uh, freehanding it. I think this is a good indicator that the human element, uh, as I stated earlier in the video, I'm definitely gripping and compensating and preparing for this recoil um, to make sure that it doesn't have any ill effects flying out of my hand, stove piping, limp wristing, anything like that. So certainly taking the human out of it surely gives me better results. So the ransom rest is certainly the ticket in getting me some truer data right here. Well guys, this segment of Caliber Throwdown is certainly coming to an end. But obviously I think it's very clear that we've opened the door for so many other things that we probably need to address and look at in terms of felt recoil and what recoil is doing whenever you fire various calibers. Uh, I didn't expect the huge differences that I got from the ransom rest going to the human being, me, actually holding the gun. Um, I think, as I pointed out earlier in the video, that typically we as humans, whenever we know we're about to fire a, uh, a heavier caliber, a stronger caliber, we tend to subconsciously grip that gun a little bit different, differently, a little bit better. And I think it showed that. Uh, that was not uh, intentional on my part, but gosh, what a, what a difference it was. A huge difference between the, uh, the 9 and the 45 uh, versus the 9 and the 45 uh, holding it, the ransom rest versus just me holding it. Big differences right there. Um, I think that you're definitely going to see some, some cooler videos that we're going to be able to put out on that. Um, I think what this pretty much showed us is that the 9mm is prone to having a very manageable, very controllable um, uh, recoil. Uh, we're going to be continuing this caliber throwdown series and actually shooting them with the MANA system alone and getting our own, using the human, getting our own feedback as to how fast we can actually recover and get an effective shot. That's going to be something that's going to be kind of interesting. Um, I think we showed that the 40 is a little bit, little bit different. You'll notice on these recoil impulses that come up on the 40 that the graph is a little bit wider. In other words, it's a very inconsistent uh, torque. The, the gun torques a little bit differently, especially in these polymer frames. Uh, I would have to believe that if we shot a 40 caliber with a steel frame like a 1911, it would probably tighten the window up a little bit of these recoil, uh, the angle of the recoil impulse. Um, I think it shows that the 40 definitely has, again, more inconsistency. Uh, the 45, yes, while it has a much higher angle of recoil, you'll notice that it's a very consistent pop of a recoil going straight up. That, that upwards axis is pretty consistent whenever we take into account that it is such a strong caliber. Uh, but again, it's not like the 40. The 40 was kind of all over the place. Even though that felt recoil and that recoil angle was lower, the 40 still had a much wider 
uh, variation in terms of all the different rounds going up. There was no consistency whatsoever in terms of that. So that was very interesting to me. So guys, I'm, I'm excited about this. This is a lot of fun to me. Hope you guys will take this data and process it uh, like I did. I've got tons more data. I'll probably be posting some snapshots and some screenshots of all of this data so you guys can process it along with me. I've got tons of it. I want to thank Mantis System and their engineers for doing a little bit of work behind the scenes to get this thing tweaked to where I could utilize it the way I needed to. Of course, Ransom Rest, thank you so much for what you do for us. Uh, this rest is amazing. And again, this is what I really needed to make this happen. The Orm Square Ammunition, what can I say? Uh, clearly this doesn't happen without it. I've shot hundreds and hundreds, probably closer to thousands of rounds, just testing before I even started the video. Guys, please subscribe to us here on YouTube. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, of course, hit the notification bell. YouTube has this strange little funny habit here recently that whenever we have all these subscribers out there, very few of them are actually getting notified whenever we uh, put a video out. And you gotta hit their little bell. And unfortunately, you gotta keep coming back and hitting the bell because they undo your hitting of the bell. Uh, you can hit it every single time and they're still gonna undo it because I've got lots of people who tell me, hey guys, I'm trying to subscribe, I hit the notification bell, I go back and check and realize I'm not getting any notifications of videos of you, and you got 10 more videos out, it's because the bell's not rung anymore. So, I don't know, it's YouTube, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks again for watching, as always.